Hello everyone, this will be a special edition for the BA Garden because this time we are going to feature the one of the biggest meeting at Happy Valley which will be the IJC on this Wednesday. So there will be uh, 12 jockeys competing for this championship. Joe, who is your favorite jockey in Hong Kong and will he be your pick in the IJC this year? Well, my favorite jockey is actually Hugh Bowman out of all of them. We just got word mm -hmm. that... Uh, Lyle Hewitson's going to replace Hugo Kawada because Hugo Kawada unfortunately got COVID. So he's going to be yeah. in there. He's a $13 chance. Really surprised that James McDonald is a $16 chance because he is a world-class jockey as far as that goes. And him coming to Hong Kong at $16, I think there's a lot of value in there. But the only thing is, is that his mounts are not that great if you're going by the odds because you're seeing him on a lot of big prices. Uh, except for the last race of the of the leg, which is, I believe, race eight. He's the favorite in that race. But I think in the middle, I, I'm going to go with Matthew Chadwick just because if you go yeah. through a lot of his rides, they're not that bad. And I think he could either get a win or a place. And, and like I looked at every single jockey, and, of course, everybody's going to try to pick Zach Purton because he is the favorite. He is the $3.50 favorite. Hugh Bowman does have a lot of decent mounts as well. But he is on some long shots, too, and some that are drawn pretty bad, like Satanta in race number seven, which is the third leg. Mm -hmm. Jamie Codd does look like an interesting one, but she's all on long shots. So if she happens to win on a lot of them, then, yeah, I think uh, that would be a huge upset. But not for $16, because Holly Doyle is the one that's the longest price, and that's $20. So uh, another one, Sylvester D'Souza and Tom Marquand are in the middle, too, $7.50. Tom Marquand, $12 currently. Um so Souza's drifting, and Purton's actually gay at taking money, $3.20. Chadwick is still at 9 So I think a lot of his mounts, if you go to, like, race, I'll say, for instance, race number 7, um, which is the third leg, I really do think Captain Wynn has a chance to win, even though he is the top weight. Um, he hasn't performed as well, getting a lot of force. Mm -hmm. This is going to be his first time on him, but... For Perung, and and he has drawn a finally a better gate. I think he'll perform just as good as he has when he's drawn a fourth gate. So it's going to be really interesting because he's all he's drawn in his last five races at Sha Tin. He was drawn 13, 11, 12, 11. Now mm -hmm. he's drawn seven at Happy Valley. He's not going to be too bad. I think he has a chance in, in that leg. Race number four, which I believe is the first leg, I do like uh, Faribault in this race as well. I mean, if you mm. go back a little bit in Happy Valley, he's only raced at Happy Valley, and he's been with Derek Lung throughout most of his time, and they did think they had a chance with him with Joe Marrera at $4, and he did get fourth in his last race with Jack Wong up, but um, he's drawn better this time around, and when he had that second and fifth, it was because he had an inside gate. And plus, he's going to carry just only one kilo more, so... I think Matthew Chadwick does have a chance to to potentially win this one. I think it's going to be a local jockey. I think it's going to be Matthew Chadwick. If not, it's going to probably be Zach Pern or Hugh Bowen. I don't think Tom Marquand does have a chance to. Mikhail Barcelona, mm -hmm. I think, is another one flying under the radar. But I think out of everybody, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a, a Hong Kong-based jockey. It's going to be Matthew Chadwick. Yeah, that's good to hear that because you are cheering for the jockey that are, are representing Hong Kong. Yes, I really agree that uh, in this year, the 12 uh, jockeys are really in the top form. And of course, their months are quite good, along with the barrier draw. So this time, the four races for the IJC will be very, very complicated and very uh, open. So I think that nearly uh, all the jockey have the equal chance. So Joe's selection goes for Matthew Chadwick, who will be representing Hong Kong. And of course, he is one of the best local jockey here and he was just awarded the Tony Cruz award last season and also having quite good results earlier in this season so Mark how are you it's been a long time that I haven't seen you where are you now and how are you doing yeah I'm very well it's good to see yourself Shireen and Steve uh, currently working right now in the UK so the World Cup's on just now so very busy but yeah and no, I good to be back obviously we'll go for the card at Happy Valley see if we can get a couple of winners yeah, sure. I'm happy to see you again. And how about you, Steve? It has been a long day for you. Are you quite busy recently? Yeah, a bit of busy. A bit, of, a bit of long day today. So, just, so yes. And, uh, and, and you know, you, you look for quite an easy car to look at. And I thought this card looks yeah. so impossible, these nine races. Even the, the races out with the IGC, 
races look very, very tricky as well. So um, when you're tired and your brain's thumping, it's not the easiest of races uh, to, to look at. But yeah, quite fascinating. Looking forward to this and of course Sunday as well for the for the main thing, the old um, HKIR. Yeah, exactly. And this year in the IJC, I think the lineup is quite strong. There will be 12 jockeys competing with each other. So uh, at Happy Valley on Wednesday, race four, five, seven, and eight, these four legs will be counted, uh, the points uh, for the jockeys to get in the IJC. So Mark, who is your favorite jockey? You can pick one or two you like. Yeah, the two, the two that I like overall is uh, Matthew Chadwick and uh, Sylvester de Souza. Uh, Chadwick's currently $9 to back. Uh, mm. De Souza's currently 8 So I'm sure if my mass is right, you back both of them, you've got around a 7 or 2, a 4 to 1 chance overall. Um, but yeah, I think they've got two of them. I've got some a good book of rides. Yes, right. So if you bet for Matthew Chadwick, the price currently will be $9. I'm quite happy to hear that you are, will be cheering for one of the top jockeys in Hong Kong. And yes, so Fester is Suzer, $8 at the moment. He also gets some decent rise in the four legs of the championship. And Steve, what do you think? Oh, it's not um, prizes for originality, but I'll go for Zach Purton. He knows the course well. And you know, even if he's not winning, if he's finishing in the in the frame, that goes towards the, the Jockeys' Championship to the IGC as well. So I'll go for him and uh, Hugh Bowman as well. I think he's got some interesting rides as well. So Purton and Bowman, not exactly um, amazingly original, but um, they're just such good jockeys. You expect them to be there or thereabouts. Yes, right. Purton and Bowman currently, will, it pays $3.20 and $5.5 for them. Uh, do you think uh, any amount of them in the four legs have, uh, are having quite a good chance, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I suppose in, in, in race number eight, there's always exponentials a good chance for that person, I guess. And in race number seven, I think that uh, Packing Famous is an interesting horse. He made a nice um, seasonal return. He was second to um, Nearly Fine at a good price. And then he was second again to the Anomaly. He had a lot of blood in his trachea after that race. So he's been given a break. But he's been running. He's been galloping every single day since then. So so he really has... Uh, he hasn't done any barrier trials, but he's just been running consistently. So the fact that he's making a return after 77 days, he was 101-day absence when he came back and finished second to nearly fine. So I think uh, with uh, Gate 8, it's fine. Zach Purton on board for Danny Shum. So I think he's a good... A good selection there, hopefully. Mm, yes, and I still remember the last season when Zach won the champions of the IJC. He actually he didn't score any victory in the four legs, but he had so many seconds and third, so that's why he can also win the championship. So, uh, apart from the IJC selections, do you have any other horse that will be your best bet for the uh, Wednesday meeting at Happy Valley? <laughs> I do. I have race number six. This is going to be over the 1,200 meters. Um, I went with number two, Mega Bonus. Now, he's going to go try to get back-to-back uh, -back wins. He did have Zach Purden up on his last route, his last mount. Tom Marquand's going to be on him this time. Um, but his last two races, or actually, I should say his last three races, have been very consistent, first, third, second. Now, he is a dynamic horse. He does co he comes from off the pace, but his last win was he took the lead and, and, and never looked back. So I think with everything else, if he doesn't challenge for the speed, other horses will, but he doesn't need the speed. And that's what I think is, is very important, and especially that he is drawn inside. You are going to get $10. I think that is, even if on the place line, he's about $2.50. He should be up there. If he's not, I'd be really surprised. He's trying to go for back-to-back -back wins, but that win, he held on and barely held on, but he still was able to do it. So I think the speed is going to hold up in this race, and depending on how the track plays, but uh, if the speed dominates in the first couple of races, then I think he does definitely have a chance to win this one, depending on how they're going to ride him. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's going to be race number six, number two, mega bonus for me, and that's going to be my best bet on the card. 
Yeah, so Joe's best bet for the night will be Mega Bonus, which is number two in race six. He will be ridden by Tom Marquand. But uh, one thing to remind our audience, because uh, in race six, the marks, uh, the points will not be counted in the Jockey Challenge. In this uh, IJC nights, the Jockey Challenge will only counting the four legs of the challenge, which will be race four, race five, race seven, and race eight. And Joe, can you tell us more about your favorite horses? Do you have any other pick? you like yeah i have my next best bet and that's going to be within the legs it's going to be the last leg uh which i think is pretty wide open and that's going to be race number eight that's over 1200 meters now i'm going to pick zach Purton in this race because i'm a big fan of this horse and that's number seven mm -hmm. exponential with douglas white interesting to see that zach Purton gets the mount and douglas white's on him but douglas white um decided not to have lyle hewittson on him who is his normal rider so they actually they actually switched, and they did have Alex. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Alex Hamlin the last time, and, and got a bold second. He's drawn number yeah. six, and he's been pretty consistent. Um, hasn't gone below sixth in his last ten starts, so he'll be up there. I think um, he's come in at big prices as well, but he's going to be around the second or third favorite with uh, six dollars and thirty cents. So Zach Purton. I think he'll take out the last race. Uh, nothing against Adios or California Veins. Um, it, it, it does look wide open, and the betting is suggesting it. Matthew Chadwick's also on the second favorite, Gold Marquis. So the only thing is he's drawn 12, so I don't know if he'll, he'll be able to catch him. So I think uh, number seven, Exponential, and race number eight, the last leg of the Jockey Challenge. <laughs> so exponential this time will be ridden by Zach Proton. Uh, he will be riding for this Douglas White trained horse. Yes, right. I really agree that this horse is very consistent. And <coughs> I also think that he is a course and distance specialist, always performing well over the 1200 meters at Happy Valley. So race eight, number seven, exponential will be Joe's next best bet. So can you also tell us when will you be watching the IJC? Because this is quite, this is quite a worldwide event. I'm going to watch it from California near the Bay Area. So I'm going to be looking mm -hmm. forward to to this and then also the HKIR, HKIR in, in, at Sha Tin. So this is going to be interesting. Always fun to watch the Happy Valley Night uh, with the International Jockeys Challenge, the lead up to the HKIR, which we are going to see the big guns. But it's always cool to see them not getting, you know, the big mounts, like the big races. They're just trying to win who's going to be the better jockey. Mm -hmm. So I do like this competition. Yes, that's amazing. I really can't wait for the back two meetings in uh, the coming weeks, IJC on Wednesday and also HKIL on Sunday at Sha Tin. So hopefully we can bring you some winner and we also hope you to enjoy the big race in Hong Kong, no matter where are you in. So just enjoy this big week for uh, for Hong Kong racing. And Mark, for the whole night, uh, the whole card, there will be nine races at Happy Valley on Wednesday. Do you have any best it can be for uh, in any races, not only in the four legs of the championship. Who do you like? Yeah, I'm quite keen on uh, Sylvester de Souza's Storm Legend in race seven. I think this one's overpriced, currently $10 right now yes. in Hong Kong. I expect this one to run well. Um, Ex-UK horse uh, running Ireland. I think this one's going to run out its odds. I think the draw could be an issue out wide, but I think $10 is a big price. I think this one will probably be shorter on the day. Yes, gate trail for Storm Legend, but Sylvester de Souza, you know, he knows the course well, so hopefully he can overcome the wide draw. And Steve, who do you like as your best bet for the day? Um, I was torn between two. I thought race five was interesting. Sunny Delight took a long time to get off the mark, but he did get off the mark last time over course and distance with Lyle Hewitson. And because um, Yuga Kawada has now been an absentee, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's quite... Um, serendipitous, that's a good word, that um, Lyle Hewitson has been reunited with the horse, so he knows him well, has a good chance. But for me, I think I'll go to race four, and that mm. is the, is it is it race four, leg one of the IGC? I'll go for Faribo, Faribolt, Faribo, nice horse. He ran well on his stable debut for Pierung, 
And um, he's a horse that never won last season, but he, he ran countless good races. This is his course and distance. Matthew Chadwick on board, gate four. He's got wearing blinkers for the second time. It's a very competitive race, but I just think Farabo, he really deserves to get a win. He's a really likable horse. He's got good pace, and I think this will be his time. I, I would have liked Matthew Chadwick. I thought he's interesting for the jockey's champ, the jockey's um, prize, but he yeah. I just don't like his other rides quite so much. But I think he has a, a great chance with Farabo. Yes, I think so. Number 10, Fabro in race four, uh, I think he's doing well after transferring to Pierre N Stable. So hopefully this time he can make you off the good draw. All right, thank you, Mark. And thank you, Steve, for your uh, ideas of the IJC night. So this is quite a worldwide event. I would say the IJC on Wednesday at Happy Valley and also the HKIL on Sunday at Sha Tin. Mark, can you also tell us where will you be watching the big races? I'll be probably watching it in the Betfair office, to be honest with you. Um, hopefully, uh, Steve's selection can get off the win and start in race four. I'll make sure my jockey bet shortened up in price. Yeah. But dead look, I think that one's got a big chance. I was quite keen on a Supreme Lucky in race four. Mm -hmm. um, I think this one, again, is overpriced. Um, I mean, obviously, Zach Burton's on board. I think it ran well in debut at Shy Tin. Um, it's got a good draw in one. Um probably the one to beat but we'll take Matthew Chadwick for the jockey bet Steve can get that one off um, so. yeah looking forward to it um, I'll, start, I'll be watching it from the Betford office likely yeah that's good and Steve how about you will be, will you be watching the big races is this uh, tomorrow or Sunday Sunday uh, both, both. Yeah, tomorrow I'm doing a bit of work, unfortunately, so I'll probably be catching up when I get home from work. I'll just be having a quick look and seeing the results tomorrow. But Sunday's the main thing, you know, so I'm off I'm off on Thursday for six days. So, whoopee, I can do a study, form study, and um, really get in the zone. And, well, it's, it's 5 o'clock. Was it, Mark? It's very unsociable, isn't it? It starts about 5 a.m., doesn't it, if you're in Britain, for yeah. the first races at Sha it, Yeah, yeah. It, it's Only hardly worth going to bed. <clears throat> Yeah, only the diehards and then the Aussie fans will be up for it. Yeah, yeah. I might, I might force myself. I'll set the alarm. I'll go to bed about eleven o'clock, get five hours sleep, and then um, I'll be watching it at five a.m. in the morning. So that's what I'll do. Get some yeah, I food. Think in. Lucky. I think we're quite lucky as well because obviously the ones we're interested in are sort of halfway through the card. So maybe get a little an extra hour in bed. Yeah, so. yeah, mm. an extra hour in bed, fantastic. Yeah. Yes, well, so I think it worked. It worth to wake up earlier for the big day. So hopefully uh, we can bring you all some winners and hopefully we will enjoy watching the races at both Happy Valley and Sha Tin in the coming week. So thank you for watching. We will see you next time. Goodbye.